Hello friends, today I'll be discussing an important topic which is the Silhout sign. This sign is one of the classic signs described in chest radiology. So in this lecture, I'll be describing what the Silhout sign means and how it can be used to localize chest lesions in chest x-ray. So friends, before going to topic proper, let's see what the word Silhout means. Silhout refers to the sharp outline cast by an object, a dark object, against a bright background. So as you can see in the figure, against this white background, you can see the sharp outline of this lady, right? This is known as Silhout. Now how can you extrapolate this to our radiological imaging, that is in chest radiograph? So in this frontal radiograph, you can see there is an opacity here, right? So how do you describe it? You can use terms like opacity in the left lower zone. We have previously seen how the lungs can be divided into zone. But can you make it further better? For that, you can apply the Silhout sign so that you can give added adjectives to localize the lesion. For example, to say in a segment or in a lung lobe. Let's see. The Silhout sign is based on this particular definition. That is an intrathoracic opacity. So you must have an intrathoracic opacity. If in anatomic contact with heart, iota, or diaphragm will obscure its border. So by definition you should have an intrathoracic opacity and if this opacity is in anatomic contact with three structures, they are the heart, iota or diaphragm, then it must obscure its border. For example you have a lesion here. If this lesion is in anatomic contact with the heart, this border is obliterated. Or you have another lesion over here. If this lesion is in anatomic contact with diaphragm, its border is obliterated. That is the shadow merges with the diaphragm. So always remember the Silhout sign refers to the loss of Silhout. So you have an opacity somewhere here and if you cannot see the margin of the diaphragm clearly it means that the lesion is in contact with diaphragm so the diaphragmatic outline is lost so there is loss of silhouette so we shall see this through number of examples first case you have a frontal radiograph so you can see a opacity here an intrathoracic opacity so the first criteria is fulfilled now to our aim is to localize, right? So for this part, we shall see what all the structures this opacity is obscuring. So we are looking for three structure, which is the heart, the iota, and the diaphragm. So let's see them one by one. So is this opacity obscuring the diaphragm? No, you can see the diaphragm clearly on either side. What about iota? Let's see, this is the iotic knuckle. You have the descending iotic line here. Ascending iota will be somewhere here because we know ascending iota forms the right upper heart border. So the iota is also not obscured. Then what is remaining? The heart. You can see the left heart border. It's clear. But what about the right heart border? It is not clearly seen. So it means that the lesion is obscuring the right cardiac border. So it has to be in anatomical contact with the right heart border. For this, we should know what is in anatomic contact with the right heart border. For this, we should be familiar with the segmental anatomy of the lung on chest radiograph. So this is an image taken from the textbook Sutton. So friends, go back and review the segmental anatomy of lung in chest radiograph. I'll outline this in figure. Consider this the schematic representation. So you have the mediastinum here. You have the heart here. So what can you see? 
the right heart border is in contact with what? The right middle lobe. Whereas the left heart border is in contact with what? The lingula of the left lung. So, going back to the radiograph, this lesion is obscuring the right heart border. So, it must be in anatomical contiguity with the right middle lobe, going by the segmental anatomy. So, we can localize this lesion in right middle lobe. I hope that's clear. Now, coming to case number two. So, do you have an intrathoracic capacity? Yes. Where is it? You can see here. So, initially, we can localize it to left lower zone. Now, to find out the anatomical location, let's look at what it is obscuring. Is it heart, iota or diaphragm? Let's take iota first. This is the region of aortic knuckle. This is the descending aortic line. Here forms the ascending iota. So, iota is intact. What about the heart? Right heart bottom, intact. What about the left? Look carefully. You can make out the left cardiac margin through the radio opacity here. Now, what else is remaining? The right diaphragm is intact. So, the iota is intact. The right heart border as well as the left heart border is intact. What is left? Can you make out the left diaphragm? Not possible. So, you cannot make out the left diaphragmatic outline. So, the lesion is obscuring the left diaphragm. Now we have to find out which part of the lung overlies it. Go back to the segmental anatomy. As you can see, you have the mediastinum here. You have the heart here. This is the segmental anatomical representation. You have the diaphragm here. What is in contact with the diaphragm on the left side? This, these are the basal segments of the lower lobe of the lung. So at this point, I advise or I urge all of you to go back and review the segmental anatomy of lung on chest radiograph because it's very important, especially the radiology residents. They have to be familiar with not just the lung lobes, but also the segments. So the, there is time constraint and we cannot discuss them all. So going by the diagram, we can see that the basal segments of both lower lobes of lung is in contact with the diaphragm. So going back to the chest radiograph, so the left diaphragm is obscure. So the lesion must be within the left lower lobe preferably the basal segments. Now coming to case number three. Do you spot uh, intrathoracic capacity? Yes. Where is it? Somewhere here. Now let's see what it is obscuring. Heart, diaphragm or iota. Let's take iota. So here's the region of the aortic knuckle. Going by, you can see the descending aortic line. Here you can expect the ascending iota. This is the region of right heart border. The right hemidiaphragm is intact. Now let's see on the left side. Is the left hemidiaphragm intact? Yes, it is. What about the heart border? Tracing down, you can see here it is not clear. So the lesion is obscuring the left heart border. So going back to the segmental anatomy, as we have already discussed, this being the left heart border, it is the lingula segment of the left lung, which is in anatomic contact with the left heart border. So you localize this lesion to lingula, lesion or opacity to lingula. Coming to the fourth case, again going by the algorithm, can you spot an intrathoracic opacity? Yes, you can see it here in the right hemithorax. Now let's see what it is obscuring. Tracing the diaphragm, yes, it is intact. Now let's trace the iota, it's the aortic knuckle, so it's a little difficult to see the descending aortic line. But that won't be a problem because the lesion in the right side, right? So we're not concerned about the descending iota at all. Can we see the ascending iota? Yes, the ascending iota appears fairly normal. What about the heart borders? Left heart border intact? Yes. What about the right heart border? Can you see it? If you look carefully, yes, you can make it out the right heart border. So what has happened? Now we shall review the definition of Silhout sign again. 
The Silhout sign also states that an intrathoracic opacity not in anatomic contact with heart, diaphragm or iota will not obscure its border. So the definition works both ways. You can localize the lesion based on the Silhout sign as well as you can with some conviction say that the lesion does not belong to a particular lobe. So from this by making out the right heart border we can say with conviction or with confidence that this lesion or opacity is unlikely to be in the right middle lobe. So what is left? Go back to the segmental anatomy. We have already discussed the diaphragm is in contact with the basal segments of both lower lobes. Okay. But there is yet another superior segment of the lower lobe that is not in contact with the diaphragm. And going by the segmental anatomy, its location is somewhere here. So this could be likely to be in the right lower lobe. To be specific, the superior segment. So you can definitely rule out its location in being the right middle lobe. So I hope that is clear. Coming to case 5. So is there an intrathoracic capacity? Yes, you can see an intrathoracic capacity. Now let's see what it is obscuring. You can see this is the uh, collimated view. I have only provided selected parts. The right diaphragm is intact. Can you make out the right lower heart border? Yes, lower heart border is pretty much okay. So what is it obscuring? So going by the anatomy, if you were to look carefully, the right part of the mediastinum, lower part of the heart border is formed by the right atrium and further up by the ascending aorta. So this is somewhere the region of ascending aorta. So you can see that the lesion is still houting the ascending aorta. Again, reviewing the segmental anatomy, ascending aorta being an anterior structure, any lung lobe or lung segment in the anterior part um, can or lesion within the anterior part can obscure the ascending aorta. So uh, you can localize it to the right upper lobe to be specific maybe the anterior segment. So I again urge you all to go back and review the segmental anatomy how the lung is divided into three lobes and further into segments and how you can identify. Uh, the segments on chest radiograph. So by applying the Silhout sign, that is the loss of Silhout sign, the ascending iota, any lesion obscuring, can be localized to the upper right up, upper lobe to be specific the anterior segment. Now coming to last case, what do you see? Going by the algorithm, you have an intrathoracic capacity. Yes. Is it obscuring any structure? Going by the previous example, you can see the ascending aorta. It's not clearly seen. Can you see the heart border? No. But friends, remember, don't jump into conclusion. First and foremost, before uh, localizing it into the lung lobes or segments, you have to see whether actually is it in the lung itself. Answer that question first. You know that the lesion, intrathoracic lesion, that's what the Silhout sign, to describe the Silhout sign, the term used, it's the intrathoracic lesion, which means it can be intrapulmonary as in here, or it can be within the mediastinum as shown here. So, for those of you already know, there are several points to differentiate between intrapulmonary versus mediastinal lesion. And for those who don't know, I should be discussing that in the upcoming videos. Let's assume that we already know that this is a mediastinal lesion. Well, yes, this is a mediastinal lesion. So those who are not familiar with it, don't worry. We shall discuss the points to differentiate between these two. Once you have localized this into the mediastinum, you have to further classify whether it belongs to the anterior mediastinum or middle mediastinum or posterior mediastinum. So, for those who already know yet again that the heart 
being an anterior mediastinal structure if you were to extend Silhout sign here the lesion is obscuring the cardiac border it means that the lesion is likely to be in the anterior mediastinum so for those who are not familiar with it don't worry i have put up this picture just to emphasize that the silhout sign can be extended not just to the intrapulmonary but it is also applicable to the mediastinal lesions as well so to summarize the silhout sign we have learned to define the silhout sign using the positive adjunct as well as the negative value too that is obscuring versus non-obscuring then its application in chest radiograph is to localize an intrathoracic opacity and remember by intrathoracic it is applicable to both intrapulmonary as well as mediastinal pathology and finally the most important point is that the silhout sign refers to the loss of silhout you're looking for the loss of the outline so friends i hope by end of this video you all are familiar with the silhout sign and its use in localizing lesions on chest x-ray so i'll be coming up with more videos till then bye